Well, what a joy it is to be with you this uh, snowy morning. Uh, thanks for coming out and uh, braving the weather. And as Lori said, hopefully we will uh, get home in a timely fashion before things get uh, a little more interesting. Uh, it's been quite a winter so far, and it's hard to believe it's only January 5th. But we'll hang in there. I want to share with you um, from the second chapter of Matthew, uh, the first 12 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where's the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, uh, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the, uh, where the uh, Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. After, they'd heard, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let's pray. God, open our hearts to that which you would say to us today. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be right in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. When I got that phone call on Friday from Tish, uh, who needs our prayer, she's not feeling well, um, I uh, immediately went uh, to the, this text uh, that was uh, our text for today and read through these 12 verses a, a couple different times. And it struck me that there are so many things in this text that we could talk about. Uh, we could spend a long time, we won't, but we could, spend a, a very long time. These, this text is so interesting and so inspiring. We, we could talk, for example, about how these men came from the East, how they paid attention and were observant to the things that were happening around them. I, I suspect that many in their country, we don't know what, exactly what their country was, but many in their country in that area saw that star. I, I, I assume that lots of folks uh, recognized that something was different in the sky, but as far as we know, these three were the only three that took it seriously, that said, hey, you know, I want to go and investigate this. I want to find out more about this. And it reminded me of how many times in Scripture, Folks who pay attention are rewarded through an understanding of what God is doing. I, I think of Moses uh, there in the backside of the desert, and he walks along. I don't, you know, you, do you ever wonder how many people walk by that bush? You know, I, I, and they were just too busy in time. They, they weren't interested. But Moses, it says in the text, went over, let, let me see this thing. And God spoke to him out of the bush, and it's kind of history from there, literally. So, you know, people that pay attention tend to get connected to God. And that's what happened with these 
uh, wise men. Uh, the message translation calls them scholars, uh, magi in Matthew's version. It's what happened to these folks. They paid attention. And when I think of that reality, it always begs the question for me, am I paying attention? Am I paying attention to the things that God is seeking to do around me? What is God trying to show me? What is God trying to point out to me that maybe I'm missing because I'm too busy? You know, life is, is full of busyness, isn't it? And a lot of the things I, 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 I do, I could say, you know, these are good religious things I'm taking care of in all these hundreds of meetings that I go to. But I miss, I'm afraid, sometimes the things that God is trying to show me. The wise men paid attention to the star, and they were rewarded by seeing God. So we could talk about that. We could, we could spend time talking about that. I also thought maybe we could talk about Herod. Interesting guy. We could, we could choose to go in that direction, too. Herod is certainly a unique sort of individual. Maybe not all that unique, I guess, really thinking about it. I always find it sadly comical when I read that passage here that says, when the wise men came and said they were looking for the king and Herod got that word, said that Herod was upset and all Jerusalem with him. I, I think probably any time Herod was upset, all Jerusalem was upset with him. I think that's the kind of guy that he was. And as we see, if we continued to read on what happened after the Magi went back by another route and didn't come back to tell Herod where the child was, once he learned that his trick, his scheme, didn't work out, he adopted that kind of scorch-the-earth policy that so often corrupt and powerful leaders tend to follow. And he simply killed everybody who might possibly oppose him. We could talk about that. We could talk about the realities that Herod, his actions and his life really point us to in our own world. We could talk about how hard it is sometimes to believe in the face of all of that, that God is good and that God is powerful in the face of the tremendous evil that we sometimes see around us. We could talk about how hard it is to believe what Scripture tells us over and over and over again, that violence only begets violence, and that love is the only thing that ultimately wins. That's so hard to believe, isn't it? When everything within us wants to abandon those principles in the face of tremendous evil and take action, we want to defeat the Herod's with the same policies that the Herods use. So we could have spent some time talking about that. It's, it's an interesting route in the midst of this scripture. But I decided I didn't want to do any of that this morning. I want to invite us on this first Sunday morning of this new year to focus on what happened to these magi, these wise men, these scholars, when they reached the end of their journey. When I think of these individuals, I, I kind of imagine them. I, I don't know, when I read scripture, I just kind of picture it in my head. I'm sure you do too in, in, in various ways. And I think of them back in, in whatever land they were from in the east. Some have suggested Persia, but we don't really know. Somewhere in the east going about their business, 
And, and again, this, they see this star, and, and, and in that day, of course, um, a lot was put into understanding the activities of things in the world through what was happening in the heavens. And so it got their attention. Didn't get everybody's attention, like we said, but it got their attention. And maybe it started out as a scientific endeavor. I don't know. You know maybe they just said, well, let's, let's, let's see if we can understand something about what's going on here. There was a unique phenomenon. And they're interest, they were interested in discovering what might be behind it. But along the way, I think it became more than that. We don't know exactly what happened. We don't know what caused them to begin to look for a new king of the Jews so that they might go and celebrate his birth. But as they continued to seek their quest, became more than just a scientific endeavor, more than just a journey to see what was happening with a star. And when they finally arrived at the house where Mary and Joseph and Jesus were staying, the text says they were filled with joy. And when they came inside and saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and, and worshipped. And they poured out their treasures. They offered what they had. They've been changed by this journey of faith. This text really strikes me. Because so often, as I have gone about my work as a pastor, as I've gone about my life, I, I see people who come to worship and go away unaffected. So often in the 30-some years of serving local churches, I've seen people, faithful people, come to worship week after week after week and go away unaffected. Some of them even come out in snowstorms to worship. And yet, inside and, and, and outwardly in the way that they experience life, there doesn't seem to be change. And I'm not talking about I emotional reactions necessarily. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not suggesting that every week's worship needs to be life-changing either. And I'm not suggesting that oftentimes the reason that we go away from worship uh, unaffected is because sometimes the folks who lead worship don't do so well. I was thinking about this and, and remembering times. You know, it's bad when, when as, a, as a preacher you get about halfway through the sermon and you go, you know, I, I'm really bored with this. So, you know, I, I, I can't imagine that anybody else is getting much out of it. And that happens. So I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not, not expecting that to, to, to be life-changing every single week. I am suggesting, though, that what happened to these wise men, these magi, their experience of deep joy, an internal sense of joy. And, and their, their, their celebration of worshiping and bowing before Jesus is the kind of thing that is supposed to happen to us when we come and worship God. We're here to, to worship a God who loves us passionately, who came in surrender and grace, and who calls us, who invites us to be co-creators with God in our life, to bring the kingdom of God to earth, even as it is in heaven, who empowers us to live life in ways that actually bring that about, both in us and through us. I'm afraid sometimes, even when we come to worship in a snowstorm, we can forget how significant, how amazing, how incredible that is, and what an honor and privilege it is to come in joy and bow our knees, 
to God. And I'm glad this morning for the opportunity to watch these wise men come and do just that through this text. So as we engage this time of worship today, friends, as we continue with the singing of hymns, and especially as we continue in this special service of covenant making as we share in the Wesley Covenant in just a moment, let us give our all to God and receive what God longs to give us back. Let us go from here changed because we have worshipped an an incredible and amazing God. Amen. Will you receive the benediction? As we go, like the Magi, may we go in joy because we have joined together in this place to worship. May we go changed and renewed. And may the